Welcome back. Uh, my guest in this segment is Dermot Travis. I'd like to first thank, though, uh, the Shaw staff and our volunteer crew that makes this show possible every couple of weeks. Uh, Dermot, you're with a group called Integrity BC. Correct. And uh, the issue we're going to be talking about is, I guess, one of integrity. It's the scandal at the legislature, which you just told me you've been following closely. So yeah, I've been following closely. And yeah. Um, I, I think most British Columbians who are interested in politics have been following it very closely as well. And it's a fascinating story because you've gone from, quite frankly, a very insidious attempt to disparage the integrity of two individuals, but very much specifically uh, the Speaker of the BC Legislature, uh, Daryl Plekis, uh, that started after... November 20th. November 20th uh, was the day that the legislature put uh, the clerk and the sergeant at arms on administrative leave with pay. Following which, uh, there was an outcry from the opposition in particular that they had not been given due process, they had not been told the reasons, um, that the investigation had been amateurish and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. They went as far, and I, and I think this is really deplorable, they went as far as trying to draw into question the mental health of the Speaker. Who, when you say the they liberals, went as the, 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 the pe people in the Liberal caucus. Okay. Um, it was subtle, it was nuanced, but it was the words that they used, isolated, uh, rogue, uh, this sort of sense that he had an assistant who was somehow nefarious, and it became very, very ugly yes. in the media last December. And I chose, because of that, and because I've already looked into the clerk of the legislature in the past, and have released some of his travel records in the past, um, I wanted to see if I could find, based on what's out there publicly, enough documents to decide who should be given the benefit of the doubt. Should it be the Speaker, or should it be uh, the Liberals and the Clerk and the Sergeant at Arms? I spent about three weeks researching all of the supplier payments I could find, all of the salaries, all of the travel expenses, where he had gone, he the Clerk, uh, what he had done there, and clearly decided, and I, I remember the day, it was December 13th, I posted to my personal Facebook page, bless his heart, Craig James is just like a leopard. He can't change his spots. And in 2012, I released, uh, thanks to a tip from Sean Holman, Sean's outed himself as uh, my source, um, travel receipts and expenses uh, for the then chief electoral officer interim, same man, Craig James, uh, who stepped in at Elections BC for the HST referendum, but his receipts in 2010 to go to a conference in Kenya and a conference in Washington, D.C., and a conference in Arizona. Now, the conference he attended in Kenya, he took his wife with him, and taxpayers paid for his wife to go. Business class, the two of them. Elections BC's travel policy didn't allow that at the time, and so he rewrote the travel policy so he could, in fact, take his wife. He then went uh, to a private club in Washington, D.C. for a conference, and then he was off to a resort in Arizona for a conference. And I recognized by what I was seeing uh, that he'd never stopped doing this. He had never heard the public outcry that they do not believe they sh that taxpayers should pay for the spouse of a government staff member, RMLA, to attend a conference that they have no business being at, quite frankly. Uh, later on in December, I struck pay dirt. Uh, pay dirt was the fact that Mr. James is camera shy outside of the legislature. And I was able to find a site uh, on Flickr, uh, sorry, on Instagram, 
and another site on Flickr uh, that had a lot of the photos from the places he had gone to uh, during uh, from 2012 to 2018. Now, I would have expected to find some photos of him at the conferences he was attending. I've looked through thousands of photos, and I can't find any. Now, what I can find is a photo of what they had for lunch in Poland one day with his wife and his stepson. I can find photos of him and his family at Windsor Castle when the conference is taking place in London down the street. I can find photos of him um, in, at Buckingham Palace. What I can't find are photos are of him working, working on these work trips. And Linda Reed, just to give you a nine week span in uh, 2013, uh, and Linda Reed was forced to pay back, as Speaker of the Legislature at the time, uh, the cost of her husband accompanying her to the same type of conference Kenya had, but in South Africa. Uh, Craig James was at that conference as well. Now, let's just take one nine week span from that conference, Linda Reed, Craig James returned to BC, legislature, they're working. Craig James then leaves to fly to Poland and then to London. Linda Reed has gone from South Africa to Victoria and flies to London, as does the Sergeant at Arms. And there are nice official photos of the three of them at the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association offices. But the conference had happened two months before. So, <sighs> this cannot come as a surprise to the people mm. running our government or to the media. I don't know if it came as, well, it's not a surprise to you. You've been following this for, for six or seven years. It also came out and seemed to almost disappear very quickly that 20 people have been fired mm -hmm. from the legislature over the past, I think, five years mm -hmm. for saying something about expenses. Mm -hmm. How can that be? How can 20 people, assuming this is true, get <laughs> fired and it's just allowed to carry on. I mean, even the people who are getting fired must know that everybody else has been fired. Not necessarily, it because they, they would have been fired over time. Um, it, it, What's going on in that building? <laughs> <laughs> well, up until, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, Mr. Plekis brought out his report in January, up until that point, um, there had always been a sense that the clerk was off limits. The clerk runs the legislature. We don't question the clerk. And in November, after he was put on administrative leave, he and Gary Lenz, the sergeant at arms, did a news conference in Vancouver. And I had to pull it up today because I wanted to hear um, uh, his answer to a question on how his expenses were approved. And, and I invite people to go watch it. It's on YouTube. Uh, Gary Lenz, uh, Craig James, legislature, you'll find it, and go for the 940 minute mark because you will hear this incredibly detailed answer as to how his expense claims are handled, particularly travel. What was funny about that was nobody had asked him anything about his travel expenses to that point. And the reporter even remarked, you know, why, why did you bring up your travel expenses? Now. I point to that because this month, in his response, he claimed that he did, in fact, incorrectly bill taxpayers for personal magazine subscriptions and that he would reimburse taxpayers for that and he would be more careful in the future uh, and make certain it doesn't happen again. Well, here's the thing. If his answer in November was accurate, about all of the steps that you have to go through to get the check for your expenses. And it failed to catch those personal magazine subscriptions. It says to me one of two things. 
that big November system that he talked about, bulletproof he called it, um, is fictitious and doesn't exist to the level he claims. Our staff were simply petrified of refusing to pay an expense. And so he ultimately was allowed to simply have these expense checks come out. And I think there have been staff who may have raised questions. And those are the staff, according to those staff themselves, um, that were fired for raising those questions. It's just unbelievable. <coughs> I mean, I think the whole, everything that goes on in the building is corrupt. <laughs> Certainly, I, I know they make it very easy for the politicians to legally take money. Mm. And it, it's almost like they want them to get onto it because it, it's not even like it's wrong. These are the rules. Yes, mm. I can take $125 a night uh, if I live outside of Victoria for my stay at a hotel here, even if I'm sleeping at Grandma's house for free. Right? Or I still you can get take $1,000 a month for 12 months of the year with no questions asked. 1000 a month for 12 months a year, no questions asked. And um, Isn't it nice? some MLAs have used that towards purchasing a condo in Victoria. I'll be interested to find out if they've ever used oh. it to purchase a condo outside of Vancouver Island. It's, uh, you know, and then you just go from there. I mean, if, if there's this level of craziness going on, then what hope do we have with Site C and LNG and... Uh, um, okay, let's leave that behind. And there was one other issue... Money laundering. Money laundering. Wait, what? I, we have very little time left. I don't know how much, but... Two minutes? Two okay. minutes. Uh, bottom line, BC desperately needs a public inquiry into money laundering in this province. Now, a public inquiry into money laundering does not mean we're going to ask money launderers to come testify. We don't need to hear from money launderers. Uh, I think most police forces, uh, most engaged individuals know what money laundering is and how it's done. Uh, what we need to find out is how did the system fail us? How did we allow billions of dollars to get laundered through casinos in BC that impacted real estate prices, that impacted the fentanyl crisis? Was anybody waving red flags? Well, just like the legislature, yes. There were people waving red flags. They all got fired. <laughs> Well, all I can say is this. Wait till the NDP gets elected. <laughs> there will be a public inquiry. What a bunch of phonies. Uh, Dermot Travis, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank yeah. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.